What's up s'mores? I'm Shannon Moores. Welcome to my YouTube channel all about travel and technology with an emphasis on security and privacy. Today is another tech miss video and I think I forgot to turn this on. Hold on. I need to make this happen. There we go. Is it lighting up? I can't tell, I hope it's lighting up. Today I have a round of gifts for photographers, really cool items that I was able to find that I think any photographer would really enjoy, depending on what their photography mindset is. But first, I wanted to thank John for signing up on my Patreon account over at patreon.com slash Shannon Morse. Thank you so much for your support, I truly appreciate it and you are awesome. I also wanted to thank my new supporters over on buymeacoffee.com slash snubs, which include Shulte to fuse and Cairo 125. Thank you both so much for keeping me caffeinated throughout these videos. With that said, I think we are ready for this Techmas gift guide video, so let's go ahead and start. Okay, so these first items look a little weird probably on the camera, but the reason why I wanted to include these is because they are called Snap It Boards. They cost about $59.95 each, and these allow you to get a really, really nice backdrop for any kind of still photography or any kind of B-roll that you may be recording of smaller products. Now obviously this is not big enough for me to put behind me and create a backdrop for myself, but if you are taking photography of smaller items, you can set these on these boards, and these boards have really nice high DPI printing, so they actually look like real wood, real marble, all sorts of different distressed materials. Uh, they look very, very top-notch, high quality. The company that makes them, called Snap It Boards, uh, they print them on really, really nice sturdy materials, so the boards themselves don't flex, they don't end up cracking or breaking on you or bending, which could create a not so professional looking backdrop. Uh, this one is one of my favorites. It's got that nice distressed wood on it and kind of a rainbow texture to it. So it's a really, really pretty like shabby chic vibe, which I think would look really awesome for like some of my Sailor Moon photography. I also love this one, which looks like real marble. So this looks really, really fancy for any kind of high quality photography that you need to get of products. So I think all of them look really nice, really high quality, and uh, I wanted to thank Snap It Boards too for sending these over so that I can photograph some of my Sailor Moon material uh, on top of these boards and actually give them a really nice professional feel, which is something that I always try to go for with my photography. This is the other one that I got. It's called Midnight, and it looks almost like a dark granite, so I thought this one was really pretty too. I adore them, I think they're amazing, and I'm really, really excited to start using these for some of my product photography, which I definitely have to do with the kind of creative content that I'm creating here. So very useful, really cool, and I'm super excited to be able to test these out. SD cards are always a plus for a photographer. This could even be a really good stocking stuffer for somebody in your life. Uh, this is a SanDisk card that I got from Target for 20 bucks. It was really cheap. It was on sale during Black Friday. Uh, this one is a 128 gig SanDisk card and the read write speed on this is 150 megabytes per second. That's the read speed and the write speed is 70 megabytes per second. So not bad at all. This is an SDXC card. It's one of the faster ones on the market. UHS-1 or UHSI card. Uh, so also a very good one. And it is also V30 and U3. Um, there's a lot of numbers. I could definitely break those down in a video for everybody so you know what all those different numbers mean when you're looking at SD cards. I know that could be fairly useful for some folks out there, so let me know if you want me to do a video like that. But yeah, SD cards, great gift for pretty much anybody. You can always use upgraded SD cards. It's a thing. And memory goes down in price so quickly, you can always find faster ones like every year. Okay, these are products from a company called Peak Design, which I have mentioned before. I'm gonna get them out of this bag so I can actually show you what they look like. So Peak Design not only makes really amazing photography gear bags, but they also make really nice clips and tripod mounts and all sorts of other stuff. Uh, they also just introduced a tripod too, which I'm waiting for that to ship from the Kickstarter. Uh, but this is the one that I wanted to show you on this video. This is called the Capture Clip. I'll put the price down below in the show notes because I don't remember the exact price. So this thing I wore once on a horseback ride. I 
went on this really cool camping trip with my husband and horseback riding was a thing so I took my really nice camera and they asked me if I had a place to store it or else I couldn't ride on it and I was like yes I do I have this capture camera clip so what I did was I mounted this on my belt at my side on my jeans uh, because you can basically unscrew the back of it mount it onto something that's tight whether it's like a loop on your backpack or a belt what have you uh, and then on the front of it this allows you to easily clip out and clip back in your camera with this little red button so it locks in place it's super super sturdy and i've never had it fail or anything like that so you stick this on the bottom of your camera and you can just slip it out to take your photos and then you slip it right back in like that and it holds steady and it doesn't come out of place. So this is a really nice way to secure your camera whenever you're on the go and quickly get access to your camera whenever you wanna take photos. Lenses are a wonderful, wonderful thing that you could purchase for a photographer. However, they are fairly expensive. So this is also something that is quite an investment if they have a very particular taste like I do. Uh, so the lens that I have here as an example, this is my um, less expensive lens, but still quite expensive. This is a uh, FE 3.5 to 6.3 aperture lens from 24 to 240 millimeters. It's a Sony lens. Uh, and then I have a filter on the front of it. But adding a lens to any photographer's tool set is something that would add a lot of value to them because uh, adding lenses to a photographer's library of lenses to choose from is always a thing. Like we're always looking for new lenses that we can purchase and there's always new and upgraded and beautiful new ones that you can purchase. Uh, this one is another one that I'm borrowing from, from my friend Russell. This is a f1.4 aperture lens and it's 85 millimeter and it's absolutely incredible. It's the most beautiful lens I've ever seen. It's also very expensive, which is why I'm borrowing it and I don't own one myself. So definitely consider giving them a lens if there's a particular one that they're interested in. However, this would definitely be something that you give to somebody very special because they are going to be very expensive. If you don't necessarily want to spend the kind of money for a nice fancy lens for a photographer in your life but you do want to add some quality to their life uh, for a very inexpensive price you could get them a filter mine here is a little bit dirty but it's still a filter it still works a uh, filter will not only protect your lens but it will also give you a very different style of photography, uh, even videography as well, but mainly photography. So you can use this to maybe uh, pipe down your aperture and then get a much different photo because the the filter on the front is darker. So you could do a really amazing, like, like slow shutter speed photo in the middle of the day or something like that and not bring in too much light uh, with a very specific type of filter. The one that I use here is basically just a UV haze filter which kind of blocks out some of the sunlight uh, issues that you might get and it gives you a much better clarity so I can get like really cool HDR uh, fit photos with these kind of filters on the front but I think filters are something that I'm still doing a lot of learning about and it's something that I need to invest more time in because I don't understand them as well as I want to uh, so that's even something that I would like to get for Christmas is a new filter kit because it would give me the chance to learn and educate myself so much more more about photography so definitely something that you could uh, absolutely buy for your photographer they would love it let's see solid state drives or hard disk drives uh, these are really awesome for travel and I've been using one of these for photography this one specifically uh, mostly just because it's smaller but I have a feeling that when I go to CES I'm going to be bringing this one with me specifically because it has a little port on the side for an SD card so you can automatically do backups in a RAID too because there's two two terabyte drives in here which is awesome uh, and it will automatically back up all of my footage from CES so I won't lose anything. I think this is such a such a very very cool product. It's something really neat, really really useful and I'm so happy to have one of these in my life now. Uh, props to Seagate for sending this over as well because it's something that I'm going to use quite often and I'm very stoked about that. I think that any photographer could definitely find some use out of having some kind of drive in their life, whether it's a solid state drive or a hard drive, 
to back up their photography because losing your photography, especially on a trip, is just devastating. Nobody wants to go through that, so making sure you have a backup is so, so important. I also wanted to recommend having a coffee table book or some kind of really beautiful photography book uh, that you could give to a photographer as a Techmas gift. So this one here is written by my friend Brian. Uh, he gifted this to me many, many years ago, and it's one of my favorite books. It's definitely something that you can look at just as time passes as a coffee table book, but it's also really, really educational. So he has a ton of information in here as far as like how you can take photos during travel, post-processing information. So really, really good information in here, especially if you're like brand new to photography. Uh, this is an extremely useful guide. Of course, you don't necessarily have to purchase this book or any in particular. You can go to Barnes & Noble and just like browse all day and find some really incredible coffee table photography books that are so creative and so gorgeous. And I think it would add a nice visual aspect to anybody's life who is interested in photography. I also wanted to mention an Adobe Creative Cloud plan. Now, unfortunately, Adobe does not make it easy to actually purchase a gift card for somebody and gift Creative Cloud to them, which I really think they should actually fix so that people can purchase these kind of things for Christmas or for birthdays because adding Adobe Creative Cloud, like adding that membership or even having just like a month paid for is, is really, really nice. I mean, the entire suite costs around $52.99 last time I checked. If you just want to get the photography suite, which includes like Lightroom and Photoshop, it might include something else, maybe classic, uh, creative classic for Lightroom. That one costs $10 per month. So it's definitely an investment. And if you're able to purchase that, you could probably just work with somebody who you want to gift that to and tell them like, hey, I want to gift you a few months of Adobe Creative Cloud, maybe give them a Visa gift card that, so that they could pay for it. Uh, that's something that you could absolutely give somebody and they would find so much value out of that because the Creative Cloud Suite is, well, for me personally, I do find it rather expensive and uh, that's absolutely something that they could get some use out of. The Loop Deck is not something that I own, but one of my friends has one of these and I've seen it and it's incredible. This really, really cool, kind of like a keyboard layout product. Uh, but this is $249, it's rather pricey, but this is for photo and video editing. So all of your different shortcuts are found on this little loop deck device, which runs straight through to your computer and it automatically works with Adobe Creative Cloud, it works with Lightroom, it works with Photoshop and Final Cut Pro, even Premiere Pro, so if they're a video editor they could find some use out of this. Uh, but this has great keyboard shortcuts for everything that you would normally do with editing, whether that's undo and redo, or color correction, or even temperature modes, or tint modes. All sorts of different things are found on this keyboard. Uh, this is absolutely something that I want to add to my daily uh, workflow because I think it would speed up my process a lot more than just using a regular English layout style keyboard, um, especially because this automatically just has everything you need built in. So if you're interested in the Loop Deck, I have a link below to my Amazon Associates uh, account. So that links directly over to the uh, purchase page where you can get it over on Amazon. Of course, you don't necessarily have to buy that model or anything, but there's some really, really cool keyboard layouts and products that are made specifically for video and photo editing, and I just think they're so cool. An absolute buy for anybody who's into photography. A network attached storage device is basically something that you can back up all of your digital files to, not necessarily just for photographers, but you can also use this for all of your digital files. I use my network attached storage, which is from Synology. Uh, basically to just back up all of my videos, all of my templates, all of my master files that I upload here to YouTube. I also use it for backing up all of my home entertainment, my HTPC type of entertainment uh, that I want to be able to watch whenever I'm sitting in the living room. Uh, so using one of these is a nice little value. It's a nice investment. This one without hard drives or SSDs built into the back is, I want to say around $250. 
However, you can purchase solid state drives along with this and go ahead and have those pre-installed and ready for the person that you're gifting it to. This is one of those nice value items that is going to add a lot of quality to a photographer's lifestyle because it is storing all of their digital files in a very safe way. Now, of course, I am a proponent of 321 backup, so if you aren't backing up to the cloud as well, you should definitely do that. Maybe even get them a gift card to back up to the cloud as well. The last items on my list are lens cleaning products. So keeping your lens clean is such a necessity, especially if you are traveling with a nice photography lens and you wanna make sure that you get that perfect photo. Having a clean lens is going to make it or break it. It's going to allow you to save so much time in the editing process because if you don't have dust on your lens in the first place, you won't need to worry about it when you're editing afterwards. And I am definitely speaking from experience. I have dealt with that and it totally stinks. So get your person, whoever that might be, lens cleaning cloths, get them a lens pen, get them a nice microfiber. It doesn't matter. There's a lot of really great options available on Amazon. You don't necessarily have to purchase the ones that I'm linking to, but they will definitely help you in the long run as far as keeping your lens clean. Well, that about wraps up my photography techmas gift guide. I hope you enjoyed it. And of course, if you have any additional ideas for photographer gifts, definitely leave those in the comments below. Do not forget to like and subscribe. My name is Shannon Morris. Thank you so much for watching to my s'mores. I will see you on the next one. Bye.